Hello, and welcome back to The Independent Pianist. I'm your host, Cole Anderson, as always. And this week, I wanted to talk about a practice technique that I found to be extremely helpful in my own practicing, but it's something which I've only rarely heard discussed. And it's in the family of rhythmic practice exercises. So if you have played any instrument for any length of time, you've probably come across the idea of doing rhythmic practice to help secure difficult passages and to increase speed. And probably the most common rhythmic practice technique that you'll uh, hear and which I've heard recommended many times, uh, interestingly enough, always by violinists. So I don't know if it's particularly useful for violinists or what. Uh, I've certainly heard it recommended for pianists as well. It's a technique where you basically transform a passage in straight sixteenths like this. Into a dotted rhythm passage. So you would transform this passage into a series of dotted 16th 32nd notes, in other words. And then, of course, to get the full effect, you'd also do the reverse, with the first note being a 32nd note and the second one being a dotted uh, 16th. And there's little doubt that this technique is very helpful. Uh, the idea behind it is that you are giving yourself time, you're allowing yourself time to steady yourself on the long note, and then you are activating your fast muscles on the short note. Nonetheless, I never found this technique to be quite as effective as I was hoping for in my own practicing, uh, notwithstanding that many people have absolutely raved about this technique, so if it works for you, then fabulous. I actually found a slightly different variant of this that worked better for me. And I didn't invent this. I think the first place I read about it was on Stephen Huff's blog. He, he actually mentioned this technique in conjunction with the technique that I just mentioned as well with, with the rhythms. Uh, this technique works a little different. So in a passage in straight sixteenths, what you would do is you'd play the first four notes, the first grouping of notes, at half speed, and then you play the next four notes at full speed. So it would sound kind of like this. And of course, you'd want to reverse this as well, uh, do the opposite at some point. And I was pretty astounded when I started using this technique, just how effective it was at allowing me to feel comfortable playing at speed or even much faster than I would need for a particular passage. And I think the reason why this works even a little bit better than the dotted rhythm practice method or even doing bursts where you might hold the first note of the group of four longer and then play the next three notes very fast. I think it works even better than that method because you're actually combining very slow practice with very fast practicing. And the key is that you're having this time to really relax your hand and relax your technique before having to do the burst of four faster notes. And it's significantly more time when you're doing this kind of alternating half speed, full speed technique. Significantly more time that you get to relax, I mean. Uh, so of course, it's very vital if you're doing this technique or any rhythm technique that you play absolutely in strict time. It has to be practically metronomic. Uh, most importantly, you cannot speed up when you're playing the four slow notes 
the group of, of slow notes. Uh, if that happens, uh, you'll just start to snowball. It's very easy to do this, where the tempo kind of starts to snowball forward as you're practicing, and you'll lose this wonderful kind of solidity and security that this method really gives to your playing. So a couple of warnings about this. From my own experience, I found that you should not overdo this kind of practicing. It's very important. So I would only really recommend playing any particular piece through uh, once this way each day. I mean, of course, not an entire piece as well. You'd only do the passages which uh, respond well to this sort of practicing, which usually are going to be passages in straight sixteenths, but not always. This technique can also be applied profitably to passages with unequal note values, rather like this. In fact, you can really apply it to any groupings of notes, uh, but you'll begin to get a feeling over time what kind of passages actually work for this technique and where it's not really that valuable or useful. But in the large uh, majority of repertoire, I find that there are usually at least one or two passages which will respond very well to this type of practicing. So again, I wouldn't do it more than once on each day, and then the following practice day, I would reverse the rhythms uh, start with the faster rhythm and then do the four slower notes. The reason why I don't recommend really cramming a lot of work in using this method is that it will tend to lead towards too much uh, nervous excitement in your muscles, in your finger muscles, in your arm. It can lead to tension and it doesn't actually do that much good for you after the initial uh, time through. One time is actually one perfect repetition is all you actually need to really activate the muscles that are going to be in use when you are playing fast. So just doing a little bit of this practicing though does allow you to be in a place where you'll feel very comfortable playing at tempo, uh, even if you're doing the majority of your practice a little bit under tempo. And I'd always would balance this technique with just straight slow practicing where you're just generally keeping it a tempo somewhere in between the two extremes in the rhythm practicing exercise. So you'd be probably a little faster than half tempo. You might be at 75% tempo or 80% tempo, whatever the case may be, but you're definitely below final performance speed. Uh, that kind of practicing really encourages relaxation and mental focus. So that's also really important uh, to have in addition to this uh, other kind of of practicing where you're really activating your fast twitch muscles. So again, don't overdo it on one day. I think that this sort of practicing is something which is cumulative over a long period of time, but you'll notice an extraordinary difference in how secure you feel if you just do a little bit of this practicing each time you, you approach your repertoire. And just in general, you're playing, you're gonna feel way more powerful technically, way more alert mentally alert as well. It also trains this kind of mental alertness and quickness if you do it in the right proportions. So that's about it. Just a pretty uh, a simple little technique. Uh, I found it to be very useful though, so please give it a try. Let me know what you think in the comment section below or if you have other techniques that you use for security, for helping you develop speed. I'd be very interested to hear any other ideas that, that you might have. And in the meantime, I'll just say uh, happy Thanksgiving to anyone <laughs> who's celebrating that or who celebrated it yesterday day and I hope everyone's doing very well and I wish for everyone to please continue engaging with music in whatever way that you happen to be doing now. Uh, please do support this channel too if you find my content to be helpful to you. You can uh, sign up to support me on patreon.com or I also have other methods uh, that you can make financial donations in the description box. But until next time, uh, please take care and keep practicing.